evening and welcome to Resistance TV. My name's Sean Bloor. I'm going to be your host for this evening. Tonight, we're going to be talking to Steve Gower. He's a co-founder of Insulate Britain, and he's also an ad he's been an advocate for homelessness people, uh, homeless people for the last seven years. Um, he's recently had a documentary film made about him which will be shown this year in a film festival and be coming out later next year so he's open for invites for people to come and ask him to come and do a QA and a and and play his film and he's also found a solution for homelessness so I'd like to welcome uh Steve let's add you to the stage hi Steve hi thank you hi thank you, th thanks for joining us Steve <laughs> Before, before uh, we start, I, I'm not the co-founder of, of Insulate Britain, but I'm a very proud member of Insulate Britain. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> okay. We've, we've put that straight then. That's fine. <laughs> so, Steve, tell us about how you, how did you become an advocate for homeless people? How did that all start? Uh, I, I was homeless myself, um, and I was appalled with the conditions that were of the premises and the facilities that were there for the homeless people. Um, I wasn't street homeless, but it was very on the skin, you know, pretty close to it. And I got put in a house of multiple occupancy uh, with individuals that I would not normally uh, associate with or talk to, right, other than where I was put, I was actually sharing a bathroom, toilet and facilities and what have you. Um, but I got out of that. Um, it took me about six months and I couldn't work out why the guys that were in there and the women that were in that other H the HMO I was staying in weren't getting the help that that they needed to get to where I was, which was in a, in a rented accommodation and my independence back. And, uh, yeah, so I, I, I basically learned a bit of, bit of law regarding housing and homelessness, and I advocated for them. And that wasn't, that was just the beginning of the story because I, soon found out that where they were putting these individuals, it wasn't fit for purpose. And uh, so that brought me on another, another journey. But yeah, Is that's that basically how you I was... became involved in Insulate Britain? Yeah, I, I, I wrote, I, I worked with a colleague um, who I, I can explain things as in talking wise orally, putting it on paper and making it make look, look, look like sense. I wasn't, that wasn't my forte, it isn't my forte, but um, she helped me and we, we talked, we sat together a number of hours and she come back and she put it into a section, you know, of how, how supported living should be. Um, that was 2019. Um, but I always knew there was something missing. The problem I had was that um, the stigma of having somebody that was, or a number of people living opposite you in your neighborhood um that were homeless and and the and the, the stigma of that you know well we don't want them by us or anything like that and i live by a H house of multiple occupancy myself now and i have done ever since i moved out at the hmo i was living in and there's always an ambulance or a policeman or you know what i mean it's noisy and what have you drinking but i didn't i wanted to get rid of that stigma and it was bugging me really really, really bugging me so how so, how did you come um, about doing that? Well, what happened was was that a, a very good friend of mine said to me uh, there was a guy that's doing a uh, got a meeting in Stroud called Roger Hallam um, of Insulate Britain, and I was very interested to be honest. And she said, "Oh, you've got to meet him. Steve. You've got to meet him. He's, he's all environment and 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 he wants to save the planet and what have you." So I, I begrudgingly went there and. Uh, he was telling us about this new campaign called Insulate Britain. And when he mentioned about the housing and insulating properties and the savings, cost savings that could be incurred by doing that, as well as saving the planet, it, it struck a chord for me. Um, I was living in poverty myself, field poverty. I wasn't working, so I was a volunteer advocate. Um, and I was, you know, in the arrears with my electric. And it... He, without, I don't even know if he still realised it. I did thank him for it <laughs> during the course of the campaign, but it 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 it, it brought it gave me an idea of what could what could happen in this country for not just homeless, 
and all the vulnerable people and those living in council houses especially so we improve their life their lively lifestyle so what i done was um went on the campaign from day one um with some really great friends and comrades and uh we uh done our campaign and after the campaign then um the documentary uh was still being produced sorry um regarding uh homelessness which is what what i was i was being filmed um it's called black dog way and that car- that shows from day basically not 2019 to 2022 this crossed crossover where I had the, the light bulb moment of thinking, yeah, I got the, I believe I got the solution for it, not for everyone. Fantastic. And can you tell us more about what you think councils and the main government should be doing about homelessness? It, in a nutshell, there shouldn't be no one on the street. That's not just me saying it. That's the law. Yeah. Um, what, in 2019, so why are they breaking the law? Why are because they breaking the law? We're allowing them to. Because we're allowing we, them to. We are. Right. Yeah. Okay. The people. I don't think people but know, I mean, though, did I didn't know that it was against exactly. the law. Exactly. Believe me, yeah. yeah if, if you. I wrote a. I wrote a. This is a motion that I wrote back in 2019. 18, sorry, 2018. I got it passed through Unite Community in 2019 F, with a number of colleagues. Everyone is entitled to live in a safe and warm environment within their own home and live without fear. Simple. It took me about a year to work that out. I thought I was so clever until I read the Human Rights Act. And if you look at the Human Rights Act, which none of us have because we weren't taught in school, we were told about it. But if you knew about the Human Rights Act, everything I've just said to you is all written in there and more. If you look at the what's happened in the events now in... Um, if you don't believe me, if you don't, if you look at the events that's happening now in Gaza, and the fact that the international courts are involved, it's all tied up. It's all tied up in the same same thing. At the end of the Second World War, all the countries of the world, all the countries of the world, apart from a couple, and I'll name three at least: Taiwan, Yemen, and Gaza, uh, Palestine. There's a coincidence, isn't it? But they got to be invited, all right? But all the rest of the world, boom, China, America, um, who else? Us, whoever. All the big shots all signed it, as well as everyone else in Europe and, and Asia and what have you. So we're tied to it. Unless you want to come out of it, which we're all told, oh, the human rights act is no good. Well, it's, it's no good for a reason, because it's good for us. Our, un- our grandparents, our great grandparents fought and died for it. And if you think, of, I've been think, I've had a lot of time to think about it. So I, yeah. I might be wrong, I might be right, I don't know. But there was two things that I think that happened uh, tw- in 19, uh, 1948 when it came out. One was there was a lot of young men with arms, all right, bringing their guns back home from wherever, from Germany and what have you. So we were. We were locked and loaded, all right. Or we knew how to. We knew how to fight. I'm not not. I mean, on about that generation knew how to fight. Um, and the other one was they wanted Israel, and they come up with a compromise. Or I believe they come up with a compromise with the Human Rights Act. Great, we've signed for it. So, oh, Steve's just frozen for a second there. Everything I'm going to talk about is regarding the Human Rights Act because I worked that out myself regarding homelessness and we're seeing it for ourselves in Gaza because they can't, what they're doing is against the law, international law. What they're doing here in the UK is against international law with regards to poverty and housing. The special rapporteur turned up at our doorstep in 2018 and wrote a massive report regarding the poverty this country was in then. They are doing, it's, it's, we're talking criminal court here action. My my personal thing is if you if my personal thoughts are that everyone that has been involved with since 2010 and even beforehand, if you take it with the illegal wars of um, Iraq, should be in, at least in in a criminal court 
So you're talking with the likes of, from Tony Blair up until Rishi Sunak. If it's not on a criminal court with regards to war crimes, then it's regard to human rights crimes and what they've done here. So we got the law on our side. Everyone knows about it. The law on our side is called the Human Rights Act, as I mentioned, and um, that along with the criminal international courts um, that everyone signed up to, which Britain seems to forget, and America, but their time will come. Um, that uh, even with regards to homelessness, we got we got the law on our side, um, and that's why I intend to 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 to, to say and to transmit to everyone, let everyone know we got the law on yeah, our side. We, we need to be shouting this from the rooftops, don't we, so that people know. Absolutely. Like I say, I didn't know. Um, there'll be millions of people in this country that don't know that. Um, so where do we go from here then, Steve, uh, apart from shouting out from the rooftops that we've got the law on our side? Where, where do we go from here? Right, you need a plan. Yeah, you need a template. Um... Um, I've written a template with regards to homelessness, uh, four steps with regards to the support. That's why I've worked out in 2019. Um, so that's with regards to homelessness, you need it like a triage, which we used to be called a shelter or a night stop. Yeah. So you get a, you, you produce a, an accommodation that's fit for purpose, obviously with all the the fundamental utilities that you need, like a kitchen, bathroom, shower, bedroom. They'd be nice. I never had one. I only I had to share mine when I was in there, and many other people do because that's what they do. They they put a t uh, the current template now is to get a terraced house, get as many beds in there as you can, and get them on with it. Get on with it. Um, and it won't work. And it didn't work in twenty two thousand and twenty one when we had the COVID. Because as quick as they were putting the guys and girls in the hotels, lo and behold, they were being kicked out again. And I got footage of that and, and evidence. And I suppose a lot, everyone has got around the country some knowledge and knowledge of some no, knowledge of that. Um, so that's un, that's undisputable. That everyone in proved exactly how bad the home, homeless system was in this country. There was no support. Um, so what you do is, is that for me personally, the problem with, um, the accommodation, which should be the easiest part, um, was, was it for, for, fit for purpose? Well, I'm, I'm providing, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm trying to make a pilot project now, pilot unit that is self-sustainable. So it runs off. The electricity comes from off the grid. So it's either solar panels or solar panels and wind or solar panels and wind and hydro, depending on if you've got any water course near you. All right. Yeah. But basically producing your own electricity and recycling the water that you use. So instead of like, I, I can't say the figure, say it's a thousand gallons a year that a person would use. Actually, it's only about 40 gallons a year because if you recycled it, you could reuse that water. That's what I intend to prove. And also, um, we filter it with filtration, obviously. And uh, recycling the grey water as well, which that would have to happen, because obviously you can't do that with the, with the drinking water. But that's okay. questionable as well. Um, uh, so that's what basically my pilot is. So when you've got, and I do believe this, it'll work. Uh, it works. The units are livable with one person in it already, but on the mains, on the grid. Uh, there's a number of facilities using that sort of idea around the country. Um, but mine will be off grid. And what the plan is, is that I don't only produce electricity, but I produce too much electricity because don't forget, and this is another mandate as well, another position that's got to be put forward. This will be properly insulated. All right. This unit will be a, an EPC rating of. Uh, B, which means that it's 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 as best as you can get, you know, in this day and age, near enough, better than any houses that's being built today. I mean, council housing or, or new houses. Um, and it'll be fitted with uh, 
uh, low energy appliances as well. They're a bit more expensive, but then these things are at the moment because not many of them are, are being used. So I'll end up with a, a unit that's an EPC rating A. Now with that, I won't need quite so much electricity because obviously I won't be drawing so much off my solar panels or what have you. So I'm hoping to produce excess electricity for a start. What do I do with that? Well, at the moment, you can have that contract with a, a, an, an uh, electricity company, all right? And they'll give you a couple of quid back. My proposition is that you can keep your money. I, that money, that five or 200, 500 quid or 200 quid won't keep me warm over winter, all right? Electricity will, all right? So during the summer months, I plan to put the, the, the electricity, the excess electricity into the grid, and I want a electricity distributor to sell that to whoever he wishes to all them people in this country living in uh, houses with an EPC rating of C which is what all the government um, parties the you know um, Greens um, Labour Tory Lib Dems whoever are all saying C that's not good enough A is the best and that's what I expect for every man woman and child in this country a they're going to say it's going to cost thousands i'm going to say yeah well so so be it doesn't matter you put a price on the life because you've been doing it so far at the moment from well put it this way since 2010 until the present day i believe that 300,000 disabled people have died from uh sanctions imposed by the tory government they're not my figures thousand yeah that's not my figures that's from DPAC. That's... yeah all right since that 2010 is... that, that's not my figures that's the DPAC. all right yeah. i thought it was about one hundred and thirty thousand. but i was put straight this summer that's from sanctions all right that is incredible. so this yeah all right okay that's just then then they got the COVID period where they put them all uh, that's another yeah another topic obviously where they put all the elderly in, into the, the nursing homes that's another criminal court thing and mm -hmm. as far yeah okay so where was i yeah so what i was going to do was yeah ask the, ask the electricity company to to sell it to all the people that have got cold homes and they'll pay a stack of money for it and make a load of money but i don't want the money back i want the i want the kilowatts back all right yeah now, as and when i want the kilowatts i will distribute them to who and where i wish well, we will, okay? So the scenario could be that these units will be in your local community, all right, four or five of them, all right? And any excess electricity could go into the local doctors, local hospital, local school, or to a mother with, a single mother with children who's, you know, struggling with electricity bills, and we pay the electricity bill off, all right? Simple, you know, so it breaks down the barrier about the stigma, I should say, of having what people would think as or bad burdens, all right, that's the easiest way to say it, actually putting something into the community without without lifting a finger. And yeah. also with the save with the savings of not having utility bills, their disabled money, which is already there, all right, they're already entitled to. Um, can be put into proper support. So they'd have a stable lifestyle, as in a, a, a roof over their head. They get the services, the wraparound services around them, which has been cut to shreds. And that's the reason why the criminal court comes in, because don't forget, it's a human right. Without the Human Rights Act, you wouldn't have the NHS. Without the Human Rights Act, you wouldn't have social care. Without the Human Rights yeah. Act, you wouldn't have a roof on your head. It's all written in, even the unions are recognized in the Human Rights Act. All right. So we reintroduce them with that, with that okay, in mind. Um, so we pump money into, or pump electricity initially, back into the, the local community services and or local people, what have you. Hopefully then, that will ring a bell with the, the locals that are there, the psychology of the locals are saying, well, 
little Johnny now is helping me. I was giving I was giving him a fiver or something to get on with, you know, to to pay for it while he was sleeping on the street. Now he's got a place where he's not even got any utility bills. All right, I want a bit of that. And then you get the council properties, or yeah, the council properties insulated. But as I stress, not to a C, but to an A. All right. And if they're not fit for purpose or it costs too much, then knock them down. Knock them down and put new build on, but not new build 2023 style, which is why I went on the middle of the road in 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 Insulate Britain and told a builder, what are you going to work for? Because you're building crap, basically. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, it's not fit for purpose. All right. There's going to be people impoverished and 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 in being controlled by utilities like oil, gas, or what have you, the utilities. When you could have your own independence, you could have a you could have a facility that you're living in with very very low utility bills or none at all. And in fact, if you've got excess one, you could possibly give electricity to somewhere else in your community. Right, Steve. So so what we need what we need is community uh, so what you're saying is co- is community electricity uh yeah a way of collecting this for different communities now i have heard of projects similar to this happening throughout the mm. country already uh where communities yeah. have, have set up their own electricity generation uh there was uh, a guy who set up uh, it through um using a water mill he set up a water mill yeah. And that's Brilliant. that's making electricity for his community. Mm. It's it's he's selling it back to the sport the sports centre or the community mm. centre, and I think he's local doctors. And um, so it is doable. These kind of yeah, things are doable, you... but it's obviously having the will for for the government to to finance it. And they won't do it. Structure in place exactly. They won't so do what, it. What happens? So how do we do it? You you just mentioned a windmill. Right, you imagine, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight million homes with solar panels on. All right. What that were that were in homes of EPC rating A or B, okay? I would say A. All right, so you so you're saving the electricity as well. You produce definitely producing it too much. Because if I put say ten solar panels on this this building that I'm living in now, I would still have to draw off the grid because it's a EPC yeah. rating C. All right. Um, so every house, every social housing or every council house, we've got to have it by, we've got to have A, A rating. All right, in five right, years. So this, so this comes back to the insulation again. Yeah. Now, there was an, another idea that I had. I don't know whether you've thought about this, but my, my brother keeps sheep and every year yeah. he has to have them sheared and mm. um, he has to pay a five pound per sheep to have that sheep sheared and then he can't sell his wool he has to then dump it um yeah. so we've got we've we must have thousands of tons of wool going to waste in this country yeah. every year which could be gathered up by a government body um washed and used for insulation free of charge absolutely absolutely yeah and rather than using the the man-made stuff that we use now as a full of petroleum, all right, let's use the let's use the wool, let's use the Absolutely. whatever. All right, insulation. I agree with you entirely. The walls would have to be thicker. All right, okay, inside and out. All right, because they'd be insulated a bit thicker than what the man-made stuff is. But yeah, the the petrochemical one is. But so be it. All right, if them walls are normally eight inches thick, let's make them twelve. What's the difference? Okay, or 14 inches, okay? I myself, I've got a colleague that does exactly the same. She she showed me the wool that she's got off her sheep. And I'm, I'm thinking exactly the same, Sean. We could use yeah. that. Now, what I'm hoping, to, going back to my pro, the pilot project, <clears throat> is I will have to use, to get it off the ground straight away, because I want it proven, I'll have to use petrochemical ones, yeah? All right, you, you, yeah. you, you, you do stuff, all right? I just want to be able to prove the fact that once I get it to a certain rating, I don't care if their walls are four inches thick or twelve. It doesn't matter. I, we can adjust that to suit because they're they're manufactured as as you wish, and to have the facility to put whatever for this particular pro, uh, pilot 
whatever insulation you want in it. So it could be that, yeah, you would want uh, some of these units for your homeless people because, and you've got sheet wool there, but it could be anything else. It could be paper. It could be what um, whatever insulation that they can get hold of. You want that facility. You know, I'd rather use that, Steve. Yeah, so you slide that in, into it, all right? But the piler, <clears throat> like I was saying, I just, at the moment, I've got to prove, and I do believe it will work, uh, that A, I can live in it 12 months of the year without no power cuts and what have you. And I don't get typhoid from drinking the water that I'm drinking yeah, yeah. or get sick yeah. or whatever. All right, I want to yeah. prove that myself, which I believe all the filters... It's all already invented, all right? It's already there. I'm not asking for anything that's not already made. All I'm doing is putting it all together. Yeah. But if you imagine a unit with regards to the homeless side of it, where you drop, because these don't need planning permission, all right? So when you go to your council and say, right, I want to put five units here on a bit of, bit of grain, I want a bit so of council what would these units? Yeah, what would these units look like, though? Would they just be like a, a little square pod or... What would it be like? Yeah, they're about they're they're about thirty they're about for a single person they're thirty two foot, yeah. A single able body, they'd be thirty two foot by ten. But don't forget this is temporary accommodation. But within that, there's already people living in these units but on the grid, like I mentioned earlier on. They're transportable. You don't need planning permission. So in that time, what I'd say is is that you you you'd say, I want I just want to drop these pods down here, right? These units. Um, five of them for two years or a year and see how to prove to the community that the homeless are being helped and to prove to the homeless that they can put something back into society and get rid of the stigma that they've been living with for many years by producing too much electricity in their own homes. If after the, the time period comes, the community gets on with the with the homeless and the homeless get on with the community and they, they've got all their services around them and they've been helping putting electricity in this, that and the other in the little community. The facility will be there then to say, right, I want planning permission to drop five brand new grade A, EPC rating A houses on top of the, the site that we've got these units on and we'll lift these units and take them away. So they've got a permanent structure you will not sit they are already built these uh epc rating a that's what i learned about the insulate britain these properties already exist all right and we're being fobbed off with not an epc rating a which they are or a plus 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 but with a c all right we don't want to see if there's any political party out there that go for a c they're ripping you off all right because that's 1960s or 1990s all right uh, it's like having a Betamax tape when we're living in the 21st century. I want the yeah. digital one. All right, that's the easiest way to say it. I'm not going to get fobbed off. We're not going to get fobbed off. We're, we deserve more and we 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 want more. All right? It's not our crisis, what's happening across the world with the oil. All right? They can deal with us, as in the people. We never voted for it. So I want to stop the reliance of fossil fuels. And I want to keep warm in the winter, and I want to be cool in the summer. All right, mm -hmm. and I don't want, mm -hmm. and I don't, don't want to pay the earth for it. That facility already exists. So all these, all these parties, and I've had an, in, in, an issue with a Green Party member. Oh, they're insulating our houses. Yeah, what's back? Oh, I don't know. Well, find out. I bet you it's a C, because we're do better than that. All right. I didn't sit on the road and neither did 120 of us sit in the middle of that road, got arrested dozens of times to be fobbed off with a C. All right. An EPC rating C. There's A's out there. All right. So that's the first, first demand. EPC rating yeah. A's. All right. That includes the homeless as well. Well, it, it's a really interesting idea, but people are going to say, well, there's other issues rather than just housing um, people who are homeless because um, homeless people can have they can have mental prob mental illness they can have alcoholism addictions uh, drug addictions um, surely all of that needs tackling the whole thing needs tackling tackling from beginning to end and 
mentoring these people, getting them back on their feet, getting them into jobs. Because the other big problem if you're homeless is you can't get a job. You can't apply for a job because you've got no fixed abode. Um, but by giving them one of these units, you are giving them an address so that they can start to yeah. apply for jobs. Um, when, so how, when, when how they, would you what, say we should be we're helping with all these other issues around homelessness? You just take the unit, yeah? I just mentioned for homeless people, yeah? For, for an instance, when you're bed blocking, all right, when you're bed blocking in a hospital and they've got to choose between a homeless person and a little old lady, the homeless person will go on the street, all right? They will discharge them. I can't live with that, all right? Or they'll discharge an old lady or an old man into a property that is fit for purpose because if their physique or their mental illness has, has changed, but they've still got that home. So that home can be a burden, and the fact of not having a home can be a burden. So why not put some of these units... Yeah. So why not put some of these units on the hospital grounds? All right. So while their home is being transitioned, put their put these put them in these units. They'll have the support care there as well. All right. So that the trainee nurses who are on mental health issues and stuff like that can train on the guys and the, on the old ladies and the old men before they go back to their homes, rather than pushing them out either into the street or into a property that is unfit for purpose for their actual, their, the, for their living accommodation, all right? Mm. These units could be put anywhere, all right? They, they could be permanent, all right? Because people aren't living in them every day, all day, all week, all month, all year. They're just short term until their property has been set or the fact that they don't have to go back on the street. With the fact of what you will have eventually is a pod I say a number of units, five or six, that will encompass using the the services that are due us, which I mentioned earlier on, all right, by the Human Rights Act, which is the social services, which is cut to the bone and not worth the paper it's written on, and um, the health care, I just mentioned, they're already um, discharging people onto the street, all right? Now, I'm not getting at the individuals that are working in that system at the moment. It's above them, all right? They, they're they working long hours for low pay, and they can see the injustices every single day. I'm talking about doctors, nurses, social workers, care workers, the lot. For a start, when these five units I mentioned earlier on, imagine this now, right? I could put an advert in the paper when this is up and running and say, right, I want a care worker or a key worker or whatever, and put the title as, who has free living accommodation, no utility bills, and a living working wage. Believe me, anyone watching this now, and who's a social worker or care worker, would rip my hand off to say, yeah, I'll take that, as long as I'm, you know, they're single or what have you. Oh, I forgot to tell you, these units can be built for family size as well. So if you have got children or a husband or what have you, or kids, no problem. We can make them two, three, four bedroom, all right, for temporary accommodation, all right? So if they have got kids, um, what have you, they could even bring their family in, all right? So we'd have a four bedroom one and then three or four homeless pods around there, yeah? What I'm saying is, is that it doesn't have to be this way and you have to start somewhere. And to prove a point, these units need to be put on the ground so people could see them and the potential of them, and especially for the worker and the homeless person. I'm saying homeless. Don't forget, you could be a refugee. All right. Would Absolutely. you rather be in one of these? Yeah. Would you rather be on a boat and get uh, Legionellas? All right. And overcrowded and, and other things happen. Or an earthquake. All right. And, or something, a natural disaster and live in a tent. Or would you want Gaza? All right. And Gaza will be built again. All right. And if there's something I can give to some people like that, that are homeless, not from their own means, because society has let them down. All right. Yeah. The world has let them down. All right. 
And there was one comment from, I just mentioned to you about a film. Some people say that we, as in all of us, are ordinary people. We ain't. We're extraordinary people. We're the brains. We're the ones that got the ideas and the ones that help each other when times are hard. And the 1% will come along and pinch that idea and take it away from you and make a lot of money. They may pay yeah. you a couple of quid as well, all right? No. We look after our own. If they want to make money, I'm getting political there. If they want to make money, make money. If they want to cause wars, cause wars. But you'll fight them, not us. Just leave us alone to look after ourselves and get on with your fantasy world, which I don't want to be part of, and I think billions of us don't want to be part of. Enough is enough. And, and we've got to start somewhere. And the home is the most important place and a human being's life. There's nothing more important. Absolutely. How do we finance this, though, Steve? Ah, right. Glad you asked that. Um, right. Homelessness, yeah? For a start, in my town, I can get a million quid like that. All right? That's how much money is going in minimum for my town and city. You may not know it where you are, but there's money to be made. All right? So for the homeless issue and for my project my unit i'll say yeah i want the contract next year no i'll just have a contract for five pods and let's see how we get on with it yeah bring in the community and that template that i just mentioned to you and see if it's better so that than what we've got contract will be given so that contract will be given to you from the council yeah the contract comes it? up yeah it in, in every time there li therein lies an issue because yeah, we well, know what we know what the Tories are like. They want to give their contracts to their to their mates who are going to make a quick book yeah. out of this. That's uh, why there's so many they'll, homeless. They'll, and they'll they'll charge the council an absolute bloody fortune for these units instead of doing them at cost price, like you would. Well, this isn't this 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 project of mine I'm talking about will never get off the ground with the establishment that we got now whether it be red, blue, or green, all right, or whatever the colours you've got, all right? Yeah. So it's got to be us that dictates what's going on. It's us that's got to make the the uh, the mandate, all right, to say this is what we're going to do if we get into, into power, all right? And we here's the figures for it. I've already got the, the, the money, all right? The money's already here with these type buggers, as you keep saying, yeah? The money's there for, for my units, the homeless, and guess what? If I make some more money out of that or make some more energy out of that, I will give it back. I will give it to the community rather than the chair, the shareholders or what have you. All right. That's that's the sort of language that's got to be sent around this country. And yeah. I am telling you, it will fly. I, it will fly. All right. Because those that, that <clears throat> I'm getting more interest from people talking to me now that are working. Why? Because there's more people working in poverty now than there was five or six years ago. All right. Yeah. I was living in poverty five or six years ago. And I decided to go back in to that community of homeless people to find out what the heck's going on. For an instance, right? I learned on very, very soon after I become homeless that um, I asked a land registry in my city, how many properties do we own? In, in Gloucester and the lady on the ran, land registry said why is that Steve I said because they're our crown jewels and this was 2017 and she said Steve we have no crown jewels I went on a picket line with the land with the land registry that were on strike last this summer I think it was I asked them the same question and they give me the same reply we got no crown jewels we got nothing all right so the first thing I would say is that with regards to finance, to, we, we've got the start of it, all right? They've already given us a million quid for the homeless, right? How many empty properties have we got in this country? Now, if I, I know how many I got in this, this town because I asked about four or five years ago. We got thousands, yeah? <clears throat> that lying git, that backstabbing person they call a leader of the Labour Party today, Keir Starmer, I remember him mentioning it in 2018 that he would get an order to repossess homes. I doubt if he'll ever say that in his lifetime again, all right, like his back trail and everything else. But there's a way in. He, he said it, and there's got to be a way in. We repossess all the empty properties. You give him six months, 
the owner will soon turn up once they got people living in it or moving in. And if they don't, then it's ours. All right, it's back to it's back to ours. All right, we refurbish it or we knock it down and we build new. Whatever. I'm talking that that stance. We ain't messing about here. All right. We don't want to tickle the sides. All right. We got to have a mandate to say no. Well, well, that's the that's the other thing though um, that I've always thought about is that you know I I, I know I I live near Manchester and I know of several very very large buildings that have been empty for donkey's years, decades. Yeah. And I've often thought that if the council would give over those properties for the use for homeless people, mm. they could, in, in effect, help to build their own housing within those yeah. big buildings or renovate it. They'll be learning skills. They'll be learning, you know, the, the skills of, of construction, joinery, electrician, yeah. plumber, all sorts of things. And they could literally... Solar panels to today. Build yeah, they could literally <laughs> help to build their own house um, and learn skills and get a job and everything else at the same time. I mean, am I am I being a dreamer there, Steve? In my world, it starts from those that will never work again. All right? This is the my world. All right? My world, there's people that I advocate for that will never work in their lifetime. They may be younger than me, but they're probably older than me. Some of them are younger. All right? They will want to work, and they do want to work, and they're being used and abused when they do. All right, believe me. Um, so the instant for me is is that for me, the why I'm doing the homeless side of it is because of those three hundred thousand I just mentioned now disabled. All right, all right, they were sanctioned. All right, because they couldn't they could walk up a stair or they couldn't walk up a stair, whatever. Yeah. Whatever, whatever algorithm. All right, an algorithm is a major word, all right? It's a death sentence. All right, algorithm, remember that word. Because when I was unemployed, when I was unfairly treated in my workplace, and I won the case, and then I went back to the uh, DWP to say, I won my case, and they said, sorry, Steve, the computer says, no, we've already got you down as giving up work. I had women on the end of the phone, when I say mainly women, that were answering, and I was pleading with them, I'm on five pound a month, I can't live on this. There was people that I was advocating for, homeless, giving me cigarettes, I smoke, roll-ups, yeah? They were giving me, and buying me, me cups of tea, all right? I, they That was because it was an algorithm, all right? An algorithm is a killer, but it's only a killer, but I wouldn't use them anyway, because everyone's different. But it's there's a programmer, yeah. So someone makes that program of an algorithm. An algorithm so would... is a, an algorithm is a set of instructions inputted into a computer to give you an answer. Yeah. So somebody has put that set of instructions into that computer to give that that specific answer. So it's it's not the computer says no. It's whoever has given those instructions yeah. says no. Absolutely, yeah. Some, so it's a death sentence. Some, some civil civil servant bureaucrat that's come, you know, instructions yeah. have come down from uh, a government so, body. Yeah. So I would personally start with them individuals. All right, they're already been persecuted for the last thirteen, fourteen years. All right. Then we got the people that are also not disabled, physically disabled, but have been care homes. All right, in the care of this country's state. And there's some stories there, because what I'd love to do is to get these individuals in an accommodation where they feel safe and warm and live without fear, and then prosecute. All right, what's going on? And I wouldn't only prosecute those from in care homes, I would prosecute those that may have uh, incidences where they were mistreated with um, the housing side, all right, the disabled side of it, and the council's dereliction of duty for, for not looking after these individuals. There's a lot to, there's a lot of people and prisons. There. There's a lot of prisons that could be filled. All right. And they need that threat. All right. They need that threat. The likes of um those that have just turned their turned their head, turned aside, yeah? But still in power, still in power within the community. All right, within the, within within um their local local town. But then it goes up yeah. to the prime ministers, like I mentioned earlier on. All right, from Blair 
right up to Rishi Sunak. You lock up one of them, and I'm sure with what's happening now with the criminal courts with South Africa, with what they could do with that animal in Israel, that would be the template. We had it in Nuremberg. All right, I was talking about war crimes, yeah? But these are criminal, civil, criminal, not criminal cases is, here. But nothing, nothing ever happens to them, though, you know, then we, even then, though... No, they, they that's, say, oh, we'll do our own investigation. No, yeah, we, we will we'll do, do it. We'll do our own investigati investigations, and we, we've learned our lessons, and that's all you ever hear from these people. I'm, I'm not talking know. about... Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, but they're covering their own backs. All right. Exactly. This is what yeah. this is a party. I want a party that will end homelessness, and and produce justice. All right for those injustices. We do need justice. Yeah. All right, and that's going to be on a mandate as well. Yeah, we promise to take these criminals to court, from the bottom to the top. All right. Yeah. They may not all go to jail. All right. I'm I'm talking about the council and God knows what, whoever it is that we the injustices we see here. But I'm talking about definitely with the with the all those that are in Parliament, all right, mm -hmm. that are supposed to be representing us, they got one job to look after us. That's it, one job. Well, and I've already mentioned number one. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's the sort of party I want to be part of. That's all I'm saying. Absolutely, and um, <laughs> and that's what we're that's what we're trying to uh, to grow with. We've been trying to grow with the. Uh, First of all, uh, resistance uh, TV and the, the um, resistance people's part uh, people's party, um, and we have then uh, Im amalgamated our membership with that of the Workers Party of Britain, uh, and we firmly believe that when our manifesto is published, it will probably be February when it's published. Um, people will have something very proud of to vote yeah. for. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I remember. So, I remember um, going. So, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Steve, I was going to say sorry before. We're, we're we're run we're running out of time. So, <laughs> okay. um, we're going to have to try it. We're going to have to try and wrap this up as best we can. Okay. Is there anything else that you'd like to say? And I'd also like you to just say a bit about your uh, the film that's coming out about you called Black Dog. The uh, Black Dog Way. Black yeah. Dog Way. Yeah. Um. Well. Um, well. Yeah. Etc. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for having me on your on your program, Sean. It's been brilliant. Um, what I was going to say was that soon after the campaign of Insulate Britain, uh, there was a lot of strikes going on with the Dockers, RMT, and what have you. I got involved with a lot of them, and every every picket line that I went on, I looked them in the eye and said, "I know what you're scared of, and you should be. There's nothing out there, all right." So I get the provision of the workplace. I've worked in a workplace, obviously, myself on a construction site. I know how important it is for safety. But I also know how that sometimes the workplace can be safer than a home. And I couldn't didn't think I'd ever say that in my lifetime, but it is. All right? Some people go home and they can't put the electric on. All right? Or they can't feed themselves. This needs to change. But we start, I personally start from the homeless. And when they get empowered, watch out. Because they're a different book came all together. They... They are amazing people, all right? And then with that, they and the electricity and energy and resources they've been empowered with to the community and work from the bottom up, all right? Um, the, the, the documentary is, yeah, sorry, the documentary is out in, in uh, March at the Stroud Film Festival, uh, and then it'll hopefully be distributed around all the festivals in Britain. Uh, it's called Black Dog Way. I think that's the hashtag Black Dog Whale, and you'll find it on Google or what have you. I'm also doing tours uh, with regards to my um, ideas regarding homelessness with the unit that I've just mentioned on here, and the possibilities of that little unit being a bit more, a bit more pokey than than you than people believe, and uh, a lot to help other people as well. And that's um, there's a GoFundMe page called Blue Lantern, Blue Lantern GoFundMe. Uh, you'll see my ugly mug. Yeah, you'll see my ugly mug on the Go Go for Me page. We need a we need a bit of money, all right. But it's not a lot, and um, the, the future How much looks good. How many units cost, Steve? The first pilot one will cost about sixty grand. 
Yeah, all right. So I need 60 grand to get this thing and prove that it'll do what it says on the tin. All right. Well, once it's gone, once it's working, all right, and it, I've proved that it's up and running uh, and it can do what it does. If we're talking thousands, the, the prices will come down. And compared to how much, like, how much do you put money do you put on, on, on life? Um, because this thing won't just promote homes and homelessness. It'll, pr it'll prove what can be given to the council property, all right, to the social housing and to the private sector as well, all right? Yeah. With the more yeah, materials we buy. The of life, yeah. Yes. The, the communities right. will benefit and every, exactly. everybody benefits, don't they? Everybody benefits yeah. from a home. And it's not me saying it. Yeah. It's the Human Rights Act from 1948 before I was, any of us were ever born. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. that's too. <laughs> we don't need to go backwards, all right? We've already got. We just look at our history, all right? They fought a war, millions died, and this is what we were given to appease us. So we don't need to fight another war to come back to the same standing point of a human rights act. We've already got it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen to that, Steve. Well, thank you Amen. so much for coming on. And, um, yeah. you know, hope, hopefully we'll chat again um, as yeah. when this project gets built. You know, I'd love to come down and film it being built and do a chat with yeah, you about I'm it in. and all I, the, you yeah. know, ha how it's going. Um, I'm on tour. Fantastic. I'm on when tour. You if you put my tour? name there, I'm started it now. I'm doing it in February. I got a gig in Pontypool. Uh, I got a gig in Stroud on Saturday. Um, I may have a I gig in Bristol people, soon. I knew you were going to ask me get, that. Get you to uh, come round to there. Steve C. Gower at gmail.com. Steve C. Gower, all one word. Yeah, at gmail.com. Gmail.com. We'll, we'll put I've all got a car. In the <laughs> You've got a car. Well, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's petrol, so, but don't tell so, no one. <laughs> all right, but is this is this, is this this unit ready? Are you bringing this unit, the unit with you? No, the unit, the unit is in picture stage at the moment. All right. right, so it's it it's it's been designed, and it's changed. It's morphed in three years. All right? right, the only thing it needs on it now is to be built. It can be built. All right, and it can be tested. I just need the funding to, to pay for the kit. You just need the funding, and you can you can if you want to help Steve out, you can go to the GoFundMe at uh, yeah. Blue Lantern. We'll get all these dis uh, uh, links in the description below, Steve, so that people yeah. can Thank click you. on them. Um, thank you so much, and um, I look forward to speaking to you again, and I look forward yeah. to seeing you soon, hopefully. Yeah, definitely, Sharon. All all right. Right. Thank you all. Cheers, thank Steve. you. Thank you. Cheers, Bye. now. Bye-bye.